Hi guys, Bomber here. Welcome back to the channel and today we are here with Magic Tack. This video is a collaboration with him. Uh, today we are going to be doing some friendly matches. This will be a best out of three games. Every time you win with a deck you have to change it, so at most two decks. And uh, when you get the second win then you win the, the world challenge. And yeah, that's it for the intro, let's jump into the, the matches. Okay, so we did take the mid-range Ash Shedwani uh, as our first deck, uh, while we are playing against a Fragile, the Piltover and Zone, with Ezreal and Amredinger. Kinda strange deck. I'm a little nervous to play against the Master Tier player, because of course he probably has like high meta decks and shit, and uh, I'm just here with pew pew pew! Uh, yeah, I guess that he will be on the combo side, so we want to be aggressive. Uh, although, Calling Strike has some nice targets uh, in the form of Azriel and Amredinger. Uh, probably Reckoning is a bit too much, I don't expect him being an aggro. And Elixir of Iron, probably not so much need for a nearly on uh, combat, trick, uh, combat trick. Since we are not up against uh, an aggressive deck, I suppose. Okay, the Ash uh, is definitely nice. Okay, Brittle Steel, it could be helpful uh, to deny uh, an Ezreal attack. Okay, he passes, let's uh, play the Trifari and Glory Seeker to try and get a, an open attack. Yeah, probably Mystic Shot, it is okay. I don't know why sometimes the, the keyboard doesn't work and uh, the space doesn't uh, pass you the turn. Yeah, Avros and Trapper, it's very important to get uh, one mana 5-5 five five early on, so that you can put uh, a lot of pressure as early as you can. He's taking a bit of time, probably he's uh, pondering uh, if he wants to play the Azreal or not. Avaros and Sentry, yeah, let's uh, let's take the attack. If he blocks, we're happy. He doesn't choose to block. Interesting. Probably because he didn't want me to make the value trade. This probably tells us that he doesn't have another spell to finish off the trade, I guess. So our uh, second Triangle Seeker is... Uh, Where we go from there? I'm probably going to end up gotcha-ing this, or if he plays an Ash, just killing the Ash. I might want to save the gotcha because he could just play an Ash, right? He just plays it straight up, so... Um... He's a bit safer. I don't know if he's running, get excited, uh, but yeah, probably... We should play the Ash anyway. And test uh, if he has uh, one, get excited. Yeah, obviously we want to block that and also Frostbite so that we get the, the value trade, the Ash uh, is near to leveling up, okay what he has, gotcha, okay. So the Ash dies uh, but at least uh, we still have the Tree Tree on board which has uh, again a very nice trade uh, with the 2-1. Mm, it's probably best to attack right away. Or maybe we cool the stall, play the Oman Oak, let's see what he has, and maybe go for the combo of Ice Veil Archer into the Fire Angry Seeker, whatever we, we frostbite. Yeah, that seems probably better. We're honestly just going to do nothing. I think, like, we are the control deck here, he is a Noxus deck. Uh, so he plays. Okay, that's very unfortunate for us. Um, because it does mean we. Like, we have to pass first here, but like... Since we are also attacking, uh, we want to be our uh, our attack turns to be as effective as, uh, as we can. Okay, he's not taking the bait, uh, but still, uh, let's uh, probably still frostbite that. And if everything goes wrong, we just attack the, with the Defiant Glory Seeker onto that. What he could have? Avalanche? Yeah, that could be a thing. Yeah, he probably has one. I'm thinking right now. Yeah, let's probably take the attack right now. At least this is uh, six damage. Or yeah, yeah. Okay, four damage. 
Fuck the village! I don't know, it probably doesn't have that. I'm with the Inger. Okay. Cutting strike uh, next turn. Victory requires a sharp blade. I'm pretty much overcommitting by playing uh, the Defangory Seeker. But let's see. Average on the Eddy. Very important. If you play something at fast speed or slow, we can uh, simply calling strike that. We have to watch out for the Fury of the North. Maybe he runs that since he's in treasure. Oh, yeah, he could, he could still have that. So let's go for uh, Enbridge and Yeti. Probably he doesn't run Avalanche since he developed the unit. Or maybe he wanted to get uh, those additional three puff caps. It's kind of strange that he runs uh, puff caps. Okay, Flash of Brilliance. Now he's away from the range of uh, the Free of the North. So we can calling strike him. He could have sweet up, maybe. Okay. This is fine. You can easily block the 4-1 uh, with the 1-1. One, one. We take 3 damage, but uh, that's not a big deal. Okay, it doesn't attack. Kinda understandable. The 6-2 unfortunately doesn't uh, take the value trade with anything, but we could remove the 4-1 so that our 6-6 six, six, uh, take the least damage as possible. And also we get a refill of 2 cards, which is not that big of a deal, but still. He's taking his time. I don't know what he's pondering. It's real, this is 3 out of 8. Okay, just passes. Few are in the right to call themselves okay, Sejuani, very important. Avarazon Trapper, not so much at this point of the game. But still, not that bad of a card. What he could have, uh, uh, we have to see another Mystic Shot, uh, so it's pretty unlikely that we will be able to remove uh, the Defangory Seeker. But he could have a Gacha, for example. No, no, that's probably... What do we want to kill? Probably the 4-1, doesn't really matter. Or maybe he could take the value trade uh, with both the 3-3 and the 2-1 on the 1-1. I don't know, should we trade the 3 3? Yeah, probably not the 2 1 because uh, we want to be able to. Yeah, you we'll probably go for those two. And he will take 13. Maybe he will consider blocking those. But yeah, let's probably go for these. The other very close one was the 3 3. Yeah, but he could have done that anyway. Okay, static shock. So, yeah, this was the, the best option because he, he wouldn't want to block those, and so he would block the 4 1 here. So, we save the two more health on the Yeti. They grow up so fast. Okay, thermogenic beam. We are pretty low on cards right now. And the Amardinger, the, sorry, the Azreel is kinda close to leveling up. 
Also, the elixir of, uh, of iron doesn't help. We want value cards right now, not uh, cheap ones. Sejuani is okay. Can also, she's very close to level up. Okay, plus a guardian. Yeah, I'm probably more happy about taking the damage and then next turn freezing it. Yeah, whatever. Kind of a dead turn for us. Energy of Yeri. Yeah, let's develop these. Uh, let's see what he plays. Plays another Yeti. Here, if I play this, I'm taking a gamble that we hit three spells. Maybe you want to kill something else. Like an Emmerdinger on Azriel. Okay, Corina Veraza. This will hurt quite a, a lot. Um, there is something to be said that I'm playing kind of janky decks against this master player because he's used. Master tier player, because I'm sure he's not used to seeing these cards in this combination, or this deck anyways, like he doesn't know what I'm going to be playing next. That's a huge benefit for me. It's unlikely that he will uh, reveal five spells. So do we want to commit the, um, the Elixir of Iron on these, or not? Probably not. Let's keep this. Behold, my master. Yeah, okay, only three. I don't know, this is kind of weak. Karina Veraza really did the earth a lot. But yeah, let's do this. We can kill it on in two attacks. Like next turn, we block with Sejuani and uh, give it the elixir of iron. But yeah, this seems like a loss. Mystic shot, okay. No, the Ezreal also is uh, very, very close to leveling up. Yeah. We did get the, the Cunning Strike earlier. Leave no yeah, let's kill that. If it does have uh, like another Mystic Shot, it, could, it can't be. Since he already played three. But he could have a Gacha. Yeah, that could work. And we basically lost. We, we are already kind of close to dying, but... Maybe an Ash uh, on the top deck could probably save us. Okay, so we get uh, we got this. Let's see if we can draw an Ash, or maybe what else could save us? Doesn't really so much on in the deck. A Reckoning doesn't save us right now. For the stay, kind of a strange control deck uh, going uh, into Freljord instead of. Uh, what does uh, Ezreal Ammerdinger could run? It's kind of strange that he has Ammerdinger anyway. Okay, I gotcha. He did draw that right now. Yeah, this is looking kind of bad. Well we really need an Ash. And even if we do get uh, the Ash, an Ezreal could really kill us. Instantaneously. Okay, Ash. Also, puff caps. Arshwins could at least uh, block here, yeah. as real, for example. Check me out. Time for it it could block his attack and also kill it. Uh. That's what I see. Maybe you want to kill the Azriel uh, if he plays something at fast speed. Okay. Like this, uh, this one. We probably want to kill him. It right now, and then next turn, if he takes the open attack, we can arch wins uh, both. Okay, steady shock. We are one of lethal. No way. Let's see if he takes the open attack. Sejuani, who dealt? Okay, he takes the open attack. 
for us. Ash is leveled up, so maybe, maybe, if we draw the Ash, this could be an incredible comeback win. Whimsy, okay. Okay, that's fine. You do that. Sure. He must be like, okay, I have one more turn, but sadly, we do have, well, sadly for him, fortunately for us, we do have this final true shot barrage that will just end the game here. Now, the only burst uh, speed that he could have is a uh, static shock, I guess. Here it is. Okay, <laughs> true shot barrage. Okay. Good game. Okay, this is uh, the rematch, he had to change the axe since he won, those were the rules. This is more of a mid-range uh, matchup, I guess, uh, since he has Garen. So the Reckoning is kinda nice, also two hours on Earth card uh, could really help. I don't know if he is into aggro, if he is probably we need more early game presence. The Fenrir Assessor also is kinda nice to refill. But yeah, probably let's uh, remove one Avalos on Earth Guard for sure. And then I'm kind of considering the Defiant Assessor. Yeah, probably the Defiant Assessor as well. This will ensure us that we win on the late game value. This will help us uh, stabilize. And then, uh, yeah, we did re redraw the Defiant Assessor. This is kind of nice. And the Avalos on Trapper, uh, Trapper is really good on the early game. Ash, yeah, this. Uh, Seems promising. So with Garen we have to watch out for a single duel, single combat, yeah. Or uh, Judgment, we could probably run uh, that as well. Radiant Guardian, probably. Concerted Strike, those are the things to watch out. Yeah, he's um, kind of running some strange decks, so you don't really know what to expect. Yeah, like Succession. It's kind of strange. I mean, it is a 3-3 on turn 2, but you still pay 3 and a half for that. So... And also, it's only good when you're going second and you bank one mana. So yeah, kind of an off meta card. Avaros and Trapper, very important. I'm pretty happy to take the, the open swing. But maybe if uh, yeah, if he goes for the 2-2, two -two, it's probably best to not attack. Because we can take the value trade on the 2-2 two -two and he will probably not attack. Or at least not take the open attack next turn. And so we have uh, the chance to develop uh, like an Ash. Could play a Reckoning if only we had a 5 attack unit, which we'll have next turn. And we could uh, stop uh, his uh, attack. Is pressure on the early game. Okay, I'm pretty happy to take the tree. Uh, the value trade is uh, probably more important. I'm going to offer this trade, see what he does. Uh, we have the Radiant Strike here to um, try to blow him out a little bit. Let's see if he has some tricks. Yeah, Radiant Strike. It is too valuable to... We could Arch Winds, Arch Winds, but... Uh, the 3-3 three, three will not kill the, the Vanguard. Yeah, so probably let's go for Calling Strike. If he has another one, then this is really tough right from the start. Okay, he doesn't have that. Yeah, Ash also. Very important. If he develops uh, more than the next turn, we don't have the Reckoning, unfortunately. You won't want it. But we would like uh, to have a reckoning. We could probably go for like uh, taking it slow, like an Omen Oak. But it's very important to also play the Avaros on Earth card. So, yeah, let's probably play these, and then next turn we can consider playing the reckoning. Yeah, this is looking kinda bad. Yeah, let's uh, hope that he does uh, misplay and uh, commits another unit, so that then we wreck him uh, with uh, the Reckoning. Okay, 
he's taking his time, he's probably considering a play. Yeah, probably he was thinking about uh, if he had the reckoning or not. Maybe right now he's probably stronger to play Archwins uh, to save our drops. If he only attacks with this, uh, we are very happy, very very happy about this. Yeah, now this is a strong turn for us. We basically kill uh, two units for free. Archwins is very very strong uh, when you are blocking. Okay, now if he plays other cards, then next turn we still have the Reckoning, and then that's a good game. Yeah. And this Garen, unfortunately we can't uh, hit that. Maybe we could. We attack with Ash only, and then we clear. It could work. Or maybe Sejuani. Yeah, but then we don't have mana for the Reckoning. We could kill the Garen right now. And this seems like uh, I'm pretty greedy right now. But I'm pretty happy also with by playing the Enraged Yeti, attacking only with Ash, freezing Garen, and then uh, let's see. Yeah, probably this is stronger. Although it is it is very much cold, uh, so it's probably better to play the Enraged Yeti first, what did we catch? so that maybe we get more value by him playing uh, cards. Okay, reinforcements. Yeah, you see, uh, now this is very strong. But those don't die. Pretty interesting. Yeah, still uh, I want to, to kill the Garen, so let's attack. Now, of course, Garen is still going to get debuffed, but like, like you know, Frostbitten. But I still, I, I'm on. I, I don't think we yet actually risk the Garen here. I'm just going to. Probably will uh, will clear a four four by doing this. I will hold the line. A five five, okay. You are happier if he blocks with a five five. Whoa, hey! But he goes for the four four uh, in the end. Continue without. Okay, Ash, you did your work. And now he is. Ah, uh, he's gonna kill Garen. He's gonna kill and strike. Oh. Oof, okay, that's rough. I did not expect that. That is pretty rough, not gonna lie. Now we got a value trade next turn with the 6-6 six, six on the 5-5. Five, five. With the 6-6 six, six on the 5-5, five, five, I mean. So he will probably not uh, take the open attack, so we have uh, the time to refill. With uh, the fire and Assessor as well. So yeah, this is looking uh, kinda good. Bubbling Bjerg, very nice. Uh, we can refill two times with the Trifarian Assessor. Or maybe go Trifarian Assessor into Bubbling Bjerg. Or maybe Bubbling Bjerg first. Then we can get uh, the Trifarian Glory Seeker, for example, and then we get one more card. Succession. Okay, this is uh, basically an elite no deck, a null elite deck. It's uh, also oh, a Vanguard Bannerman. Yeah, this seems like a very nice fit. We have uh, two Sejuanis. Very nice. Yeah, this seems uh, like a good game for us. We simply have too much value. Uh, only a Judgment, if he runs that, uh, could probably kill us. So we have just to be careful about that. And we are good to go. He's taking his time. Ah, oh, no, okay. It was that we had a uh, problem connections. Connection problem. Yeah. So let's uh, block like this. We get one trade. He could have uh, a Radiant Strike in hand. But yeah. It was not a big deal. Okay, Brittle Steel, really nice against uh, the 6-2. So yeah, let's probably go very, very all-in on the value. Let's play the second Davros on Earth card. 
then we can go home and oak, or we could refill again with the different assessor. But I kinda like to keep the different assessor for later. Okay, uh, for Demacia, really interesting. So he probably attack with everything. He's going to block the 6 6 with the uh, 6 2, but then we get uh, the brittle steel. The 4 4 with the 4 4, and then probably we'll also block the 5 5. Uh, we deny basically uh, a lot of stats from uh, the 4 Demacia. Yeah, I kinda like that. If he has frostbite effects, regardless, right? So it, it's just a little, it's gonna be rough to win this one from this position. Still gotta try, but I think he can counter this judgment quite nicely. So we've got to do things in such a way that, like, he leaves himself open to judgment. I think I have to take the risk here. I think I have to try to blow him out. If we get this judgment off, we just win with what we have on the board. That's 16 points of damage. So if our opponent doesn't have a freeze effect, which I'm assuming he will, then I have to assume he will. So I'll make that block and that block and take the 5. But I have to try this. I have to try this play. I'm pretty sure he will have a frostbite effect. Like... The, the chances of him not are so minimal, but if he doesn't, we win. Yeah, he has Brittle Steel. That's exactly the card I thought he would. Then we can also go for the Avaros and Trap later. Try me, I dare you. Yeah, okay. Here it goes. You probably keep that judgment. Yeah. Good game, man. But yeah, it was very, very risky. Although this was a, was a very good play. Because we were worrying about the for Demacia and we basically forgot about uh, the judgment. If we did not have the Brittle Steel, that would have been uh, catastrophic for us. Because then next turn he also had the for Demacia. Seize rather bold. And then I probably like to remove that next turn. So for now, let's probably refill. And we could even uh, find um, the answer to that calling strike, not really. Raise the banner. Let our Vanguard Bannerman. I don't know, do we want to draw three more? Probably. What we could get? Yeah, nothing really. A two mana. Yeah, probably like to keep uh, our mana more open. To like uh, misguide him and then the 5-5 five five is also okay. He doesn't have the mana for the for the Masia. Next turn, if he doesn't attack right now, we simply trade uh, the Citria with uh Kaling Strike or a Tifarangoli Seeker, which is even better. We would have to sacrifice something if he doesn't take the open attack. In the name of okay. our land! Here it is. Yeah, we can take the value trade here. Trade here. And it's kind of expensive but to take uh, 7 damage, uh, so let's probably block that as well. Yeah, why not? Let's see if he has something. Because if he plays the 4 Demacia, this is uh, good because uh, we can kill the Cedria, even if he goes for that. Victory requires a sharp blade. Yeah, this seems like a good game at this point, but let's just keep the, the mana open. Let's play the Sejuani. Ash is leveled up. Tempted to just concede and move on to the next game because my laptop is overheating. Like, I just die on board here. So I'll just surrender. Well played, dude. Well played. Let me text him again. GG. Okay. He surrendered. Good game. The Winter's Claw triumph. Okay, so now it is uh, our time to change the deck since we won. We are running a classic Anivia Control. Uh, it's kinda nice to have the Anivia right from the start. Uh, we did see a bit of uh, his cards. The Garen uh, here is actually scary. We want to get a vengeance for that. But yeah, I kinda like the, the start. We can uh, put some pressure on the board early on. 
uh, to basically take the trades, uh, Grasp of the Undying. Uh, probably not the best removal, uh, but uh, could still work fine. Yeah, I kinda like this end. The Aniva is not needed, but it's um, like an in the early game, I mean. But it's kinda needed uh, later on. So yeah, let's probably. I don't know. Let's play the, the Atlas Aristocrat. Oh, we can always keep uh, mana spell for later. Like we do that later. Instead, uh, the one attack no, right no, now no, no, no. could matter. So why not take the cheap damage? Okay, succession. I'm kinda happy with keeping the mana open right here. So we can go for the Grasp of the Undying next turn. If we like to. Can do Tower Keeper, it's also very nice. We could uh, make him take the open attack and then just simply heal with Candle Tower and Keeper. Yeah, then we stabilize on turn 6 uh, with the Ruination. Okay, this is. Uh, okay. Yeah, we probably pass right here. If we block one, and then uh, we can do Tower and Keeper. Okay, three points of damage, that's good. Three points of damage is real good. Okay. Get me out of here. Now the Avarazan sentry will block uh, on that later. Cool. Good. Any damage against his deck? Oh, he has that. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. He has that. He made the same play I made uh, in our first game. So that's fine. Present sentry for sure. Or maybe we could take the open swing with the G3. No, probably. Oh, see the we are we are better on, on blocking. It is too much time that I played the, the mid range, so I'm kinda on the mid range uh, mentality. Yeah, this uh, the withering whale is huge against this. Yeah, so let's just pass. Even uh, if he stalls, we could play the Anivia to clear this off. Avalanche also is pretty good. Yeah, very, very, very good uh, since he, he went for the Bannerman. Back to back for the Master, there's so many reasons to wait on this attack. But there's also so much damage potential here that I do think we need to like... What is he doing? Yeah, we kind of have to. Only the 3 1 will uh, be kept alive. He doesn't have Culling Strike, so what is the spell? 8 mana. Oh, Avalanche. Oof. Oof, Avalanche is rough. It does kill his. Wild Feast. Incredible. We are getting. Some, we are so lucky. On the top decks. Let's talk about your deck. Yeah, very very lucky for us. The 1-1 one, one will also take the trade with the 3-1 next turn. We can have to look for the for the Masia. Then if you overcommit now the Anivia will uh, will kill the 3-1 as well. Another avalanche, very very good. Yeah, let's go for Something the Anivia. Let's start our uh, to grow our harrowing. We need a rekindler pretty soon to revive the Anivia. We're probably taking the, the open attack with Anivia anyway. The Avangor tournament. It's kinda bad. Now we don't have a target for the Anivia. So we probably want to keep her for the block. Next turn we could uh, go for the for the Masia. But we could uh, play the Ruination if he overcommits. So yeah, I kinda like the pass here. Or we could simply stall out with an avalanche, kill the 4-2 and, uh, and see what he has. If he goes for another silver wing uh, fleet, uh, what's the name of that? I don't remember. The 4 mana to 1 uh, with challenger that summons a, a copy of itself. Another Anivia. Ash wings uh, is looking kinda good. I don't know, probably block with these, uh, set up the Anivia. Stuff and then uh, grasp of the undying, I guess. So. And he is. 
his grasp of the undying that. But here we are just going to back to back. Uh, at that point, I guess we may as well do it on both. And just pass. Um, we are definitely in a winning position. This guy's going to get healed up as well. Yeah, this probably tells us that... Uh, yes, like a C3 or something like that for the for the Masia. Back to back. Yeah, okay. This hurts uh, quite a bit. You know, we could set up uh, with Avalanche for the clear on Anivia, but no, let's just wait. Yeah, probably the Avalanche is stronger next turn because we will uh, take the open attack, we will block with these, and then we Avalanche. Succession. Yeah, okay. I still like, like it. Or maybe we could do that right now, and then we kill both of those. Since now we probably block the. Um, no, I don't know how we we'll go about this. We could go for the for the Masia after we have attacked. So yeah, probably like uh, doing this right now. Okay, he's definitely thinking about playing something. What is he playing? Another avalanche. Interesting. Why would you avalanche there? That's a very, very bizarre play, in my opinion. Um, I guess because these guys would be... I'm, I'm assuming he has, like, some... Oh, right. No, of course, because of Nivea. We clear that. Then we still have some kind of heal. With Withering Whale, we could always play another Anivia, so that then we are very, very strong on the late game. Vengeance, kinda nice. Yeah, let's take the open attack. Let's see, if he blocks, we could also go for uh, Withering Whale. We have uh, a lot of options. He will probably not block. And then the Withering Whale will be stronger next turn. Yeah, okay, this doesn't work. I don't know if he knows this interaction. He's probably looking uh, into the Oracle High right now. Okay, back to back. This is interesting. Wow, he saves uh, that as well. Could probably go for a, a withering whale at least so that we kill this and that this goes at one hp and then next turn he can't really take the open attack and if he does we can always vengeance if we care about life total yeah i kind of like doing the withering whale right now Withering whale okay interesting um withering whale is interesting because if we actually if we single, actually, yeah, I think we single combat now then, because this guy's gonna die anyways. Stop with the lag. Wait, how does this work? I think it would revive him in the back row, right? So we actually just have to let that guy die. No, because this guy died, like, both of these guys die now. And we could single combat the Anivia. But if we did, then uh, we couldn't kill the egg, so the Anivia would just keep being a problem. And we can't have that, honestly, happening, so... Now here we have an important decision to make. Play this guy or play a single combat and ensure the egg dies. I think we have to play this guy though. We have to play for the late, for the uh, for the long game here. Could have a Raden strike. A prismatic barrier, maybe. Single duel. Those are all options. Okay, strike doesn't have now. any of that. Okay, now even if he kills the Anivia, we don't really care because we have another one to the hand. And we always have a Harrowing, even to revive only one Anivia. It is so strong in the late game, okay. Now it is is only a 3-2. We can clear with the Renation. So let's see, if he plays for example a Citria, then we Renation, of course. It's 
dangerous out there. Take yeah, we probably play something else, so let's wait. But we, I think this play is fine. Like we're going to be, we're we're tossing so much damage into the mix here. We still don't mind the taking uh, this amount of damage. Raise yeah, now, banner. now Let we definitely, spirit. we definitely care, and this is our ruination. He's basically asking us to do that. He is, of course, just protecting the Agnivia, though. What is he doing? Ah, he's ruinationing. I hate that card. I always forget that card exists. Okay, that's not great, but that does mean the egg is gone. Our ancestors are watching. He will get 3 damage in, but then we, we restart with an Anivia. Okay, another Renation, always nice. Eternal winter. There's no reason to play the plus one plus one buff there. Uh, I did play into Ruination like just terribly. Terrible, terrible play on my part, and I can't actually deal with this Anivia anymore. Let's go for the Anivia. If he plays a C3, for example, we simply Vengeance. I bring the storm. He doesn't have anything. Probably another back to back. Okay. Kind of strange. The forest Okay, you should still be careful about the the remission, the other one. But it seems like uh, he's on a dead hand for Demacia. This basically tells us that he doesn't have a hand. He could have played other allies if he had. So yeah. We could do. Yeah, this goes at four. This goes at five. We can probably block that with the uh, arch winds, or we could even just simply block one of those. Uh, let the Aniva die, grow a stronger harrowing. The options are uh, limitless. But yeah, for sure, this uh, is going to happen. I don't know. Probably a ruination. After this, we are gonna be playing the Arrowing. This will summon other two Anivias. Yeah, this seems like a good game. Let's just simply go for the Ruination. For sure. See, the thing, I, the reason I played into Ruination, I guess, is because he had the Agnivia out. So if he had the Egg out, I figured he wouldn't want to, you know, just sacrifice it like that. He has another Ruination. Okay, well, we're at least going to uh, pick this guy off. I guess we may as well do it with our strongest unit. So then he loses his egg. Okay, single combat. Fine. We could save uh, the Anivia. Yeah, I kinda like this. Let's save the Anivia. Because uh, we don't have really much use uh, for the Fury of the North. We might as well get one more Anivia if he has another one. Okay. No, no, this is fine. He did commit uh, a lot of resources for this. But we still have the arrowing. And uh, next turn we're attacking. Also, yeah, we do have another one Anivia. But, like, the fact that he was saving his Anivia there suggests he doesn't have another one in hand. Glimpse beyond. I kind of like uh, glimpsing the Anivia. That's about. Oh my fucking god, he has another Anivia. Okay, um... Let's see what he has. A Citria, maybe could save him. Snow, wind and ice. Let's see. He goes at 8. Okay, reinforcements. Let's kill the Anivia and uh, grow more stuff. Mm, the, our harrowing grows even bigger. Another glimpse beyond. 
Yeah, no, we can't really sacrifice the egg as well. We needed the blocker. Eternal winter. If he plays another unit, uh, then we are winning right now. See you, yeah. what we're made of. Or maybe we could even block. Uh, we could vengeance the Citria. But no, no, let's just play the Arrowing. Okay, that's good though, that's really good. I think we have to just go all in again. Um, this is how we lost last time, but... Against just one Anivia, I think with these guys we're actually okay. Unless he does something really annoying. Like that. Actually, that's really not that bad. The Harrowing, okay. Oh, does this mean he gets a million Anivias now? Jesus Christ. I see. That's exact lethal on the, ne on the next turn. Alright, well played. He got me. He got me. How many do we summon? Three and we also draw a card. Okay. He's uh, maybe conceding. The only way to win here would be if we top deck something and he doesn't just straight up attack. That is not something we needed. That, that is not what we needed. If he just, yeah, if he just attacks, that's game over. Just gonna let it go through. Well played. That was close. That was very close. Pew 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 worked out better. I'll, I'll let the animation roll through. It's a cool, pretty cool animation. Alright, let me uh, let me text the dude. Alright. Oh well. I don't think I did too poorly, to be honest. Given that he is, like I said, master... Uh, he is master tier. So, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Definitely not too shabby, and it was indeed very close. I'm sure that you will reach Master with just some dedication, because you are already a nice skilled player. Definitely check him out, link in the description, and it will be pinned as a comment down below. And that's it for this video, hope you like it and find it useful, and as always, see ya!